The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and welcome to today's webinar. It is amazing to see 72 of you all committed on a Saturday morning joining this session on Excel for Accountants. My name is Fazila Gopalani. As you all know, I am the head of ACCA for the Middle East. And I'm delighted to be joined today by Salman Sharif, Country Director of Finance at Rixos Hotels UAE. Now, Excel is an incredibly powerful tool for accountants. And it is a key skill that any budding accountant or accountancy professional should try to become familiar with. From financial insight and analysis, crunching numbers, and compiling non-numerical data, Excel continues to be the tool of choice throughout the accounting and finance field. Now, our session is today is going to focus on Excel's what-if function, so scenario plan planning, goal seek, and data table. And it's used for financial planning and budgeting, financial models, and feasibility studies. Like I said earlier, Salman is the country director of finance at the Rixos Hotels UAE. He's a fellow ACCA member and a graduate in computer science and statistics. He has over 15 years of UAE work experience in the field of accounting and finance. And he's, expert, he's, in, he's an expert in retail, F&B, and the hospitality industries, not only finance, but operational and management functions as well. He has hands-on experience in acquisitions and disposals of companies, due diligence, post-acquisition system integrations, consolidated financial systems, and IT system implementation. So throughout his career, he has been involved in IT system implementation, internal controls, business process re-engineering, along with many other things. Now, before I hand over, I would like to thank the team at Sidra, Salman and co Chartered Accountants, LLC, for taking out time from their busy schedules, joining us today on a Saturday morning, and for always supporting ACCA. Now, if you've got any questions, please do put them in the chat box. There will be a question and answer session at the end. Without further ado, there are now 85 of you, which just shows the level of commitment on a Saturday morning by accounting professionals. And this topic is something that we all desperately need to become better at. Honestly, I learn every time I'm on Excel, I'm learning something new. And this is a tool that you all need to become ever so proficient with. So without further ado, once again, thank you, Salman. I'm going to hand it over to you to guide all of our ACCA students, affiliates, and members on Excel skills. And thank you once again. Thank you very much, Fazila. Uh, and uh, thank you, ACCA Middle East, for offering uh, the webinar. Uh, and thank you, all of our uh, viewers, to attending this session today uh, on Saturday afternoon, uh, morning sometime still. Uh, and attending this session. Basically, our business environment is dynamic every day, and we as a finance professional uh, must be on top of each and everything. Uh, the problem is that when we are going into the board meetings, we are taking a new decisions, uh, the situation is changing every day in, during each and every discussion. So we must be on top of each and everything, rather it is operations, it is finance, reporting, database, and uh, projections budgeting feasibility study now today we are going to discuss uh, three important functions uh, it could be you can say it's an advanced level of excel function which can help us to uh, to uh, resolve our complex business scenarios uh, in a very shorter time so before going to that uh, topics there are two things we must need a basic understanding of that is that first of all each of us must understand what is our basic excel so how excel looks like uh, basic functions pivot charts and second point which is very important is that we all need to understand our data uh, how our business operates what's our profit and loss account what are the main components of expenses revenues each and everything and how the calculations are being made so if you know your business better, 
you will be a better finance professionals as compared to who knows who doesn't know the business itself so as far as our finance is concerned we as a finance professional should not be stick only finance department we should go and we should analyze we should understand the entire business operations to help the businesses if we understand the operations well we can make our better financial models by using the advanced excel tools if we do not understand the operations well then we will be stick to only debit and credits and will not be part of the board meetings and advise the investors or the shareholders accordingly so the, these three scenarios which we are going to discuss these are from main functions uh, number one is the scenario planning when we are working on the uh, different uh, feasibility studies or different projections uh, budgeting there is always a question uh, in the board that what if my revenue growth is 5% instead of 3% next year or what if uh, my headcount is uh, 10 instead of 8 or vice versa whatever so there could be a different discussions unfortunately management wants the answer immediately which means that we must be ready with all these scenarios before going to the meetings and excel thankfully excel nowadays is very well advanced whatever we can imagine in our mind we have a function in excel the only thing is that we need to explore what functions we need at what time and start using it so our first function which we are gonna uh, uh, practice today basically uh, is the scenario planning i am having a sample data sheet and uh, this data sheet is only to provide you a concept what this function looks like and how it works and then it is all of our responsibility to relate it to our business scenario and business operations prepare our own financial models and practice on our business environment real life business environment and you will see that your life will be become very easy and you will be more confident in providing the information to management at any point of time so first function is a scenario planning this is a small data sheet i will a little bit explain what this data sheet consists and what we are going to do it there are three years year 13 year 14 year 14 and we have a cost of different categories labor warehouse rentals inventory and utilities the cost for year one which is 13 and then it's 1.3 1.2 1.1 million and voice uh, similarly the cost of each of the elements is also provided the total cost is also mentioned and you can see this formula is sum of all these total costs. So each year we have a total cost column also now the problem is that when we are presenting this report the management or someone can ask okay what if will be the uh results if my inventory cost goes down for the next year or inventory cost goes up or my labor cost goes down or labor cost goes up so that normally what we can do easily we can just start changing the numbers in front of uh, our management or during our meetings which may take time so scenario manager is one of the tool which can save a lot of time and we can provide this information now how to create the scenarios is go to data there is a tab what if analysis and the first function is scenario manager just click on scenario manager there is a new window pop up there are options only add merge close merge normally if you have other scenarios in any other files which are open you can merge and you can call those functions here but now we do not have any current scenario available we need to just start adding it so when you click on add just name the scenarios for example i want to uh, have a scenario which is lower inventory cost for the now next three years so i can name it no inventory cost second cell is changing cell c8 here i need to give which cells i want to change i can choose any two cells any three cells or all the data it must be fixed it should not be variable basically it should not be formulated because it the scenarios will be more effective only if it is a fixed cells i want to change my inventory all three years 
example in this scenario and third is comment comment by default it will be created that my name will be there who has created and but you can rename it it's optional basically so it's not that important i will click on okay then the next window will be pop up it's showing that what changes you want to do unfortunately the, the cell references will be given but names of the cells will not be given like e8 e9 e8 i need to understand what e8 consists e8 is my inventory value for year 13 e9 is my inventory value for year 14 and e10 is inventory value for year 15. so second box is show the values which value I want to show in this scenario so my scenario is low inventory it means my inventory cost maybe is going down so currently for example year one inventory cost is 1.6 it may go down to 1.4 million e9 is 1.4 million maybe it is going down to 1.3 million and e10 is 1.3 million it may go down to 1 million so this is my low 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 inventory scenario i have two options either i want to add one more scenario i will click on add or if it is okay i will click on okay so i click on okay my scenario has been created second i want to create one more scenario for the labor i need to click on add okay again i will name my scenario here labor increase in labor for example I need to select the cells here for example i want to change increase in labor in 14 15 i will select only 14 and 15. i will click okay so my scenario is increased so what my scenario will be what will be my value if is increased for example in year 14 it is currently 1.2 million i will make it on 1.5 million and year 15 it is currently 1.1 million maybe after increase it is 1.3 million i will click okay i have now two scenarios i will close now for example this is my current cost just for my understanding my total three years is 19 million now I want to see what is the impact of my low inventory scenario i will click on this click here low and show what happened my low inventory values has been changed i do not need to rework again recalculate anything again the scenario is already there so i'm just showing the value i will close it okay so my new values are replaced with the low inventory scenario second scenario which i was having is increase in labor so current values are 1.2 1.1 i will just click on increase in labor i will show it see my values are increased i did not do not need to uh, manually input the values now there is a problem here we need to identify and we need to make a note of that now once we click on the scenario show my previous values are replaced with the new values so you can see that there is no formula there is nothing so my new values are pasted how to go back to the original values there are two ways one i just press on control z my undo button it will go back to the previous value and then another one this is my original data second option which what we must be taking care of that is that we can create one more scenario with the current values so that whenever we click on current scenario we can go back to our original value to save our time because each time uh, if for example when we change the uh, scenario and we press save my new values will be saved i cannot be able to undo so what we need to do at the start of the scenario planning we can create a new scenario add new current values maybe a new uh, name, uh, current values name where with no change no high no low no impact is there so what i can do i can select my cells and create a current scenarios c9 i can create the values c9 c8 10 
click OK. All these values will be here. I don't want any change in that. I just need to create the scenario. So this is a scenario of my current values. If I will click on show, show low inventory, my low inventory scenario is changed. Has changed. So increase in labor show my labor has increased. I do not need to do undo. I just click my current values. My all values are changed to the current values. So this is a trick we can do that with the first to keep our original data safe. We must create a current scenario with the current values so that whenever we need we already have a scenario to go back to our original values anytime during our discussion. Now uh, imagine if you have more than 10, 15, 20 scenarios, you do not know which scenario is uh, having what impact, what values are going to change, or maybe you have prepared the scenarios today. I understand that today I will remember that my uh, inventory is 1.4, 1.3 million uh, in the low inventory. Uh, but in case if I will reopen this file after one week, 10 days, one month, I will definitely forget these values that what values what these scenarios consist of the values so there is a very good tool in excel that which will summarize about all the scenarios and the changes on each and every cost element of that this tool scenario manager is called summary so now we have three scenarios we know what we have changed and what is the impact on our cost for each and every scenario but i want to see how it works basically I will just click on data and go to scenario manager. Click on summary. It is giving me two options. Okay, you want a report summary report in scenario summary or private report. Scenario summary is a nice presentation, so I will go for that. This is the total result. It is telling me okay which total result you want or which cell you want to change. Like what is the impact of if I can click on G8 only or G9 only, G10 only, or all three basically. So I want to see the results of all three changes. I will click all three, I will select all three and click OK. So with this option, I can see that my I have current values, my low inventory value, increase in labor and current values. Current values. There is no change. You can see my current values and current value scenario is same. My low inventory is having an impact of cell E8, E9, E10, which are, is my inventory 1.4, 1.2, 1.1 million. Increase in labor is having impact on cell C9 and C10. And this is the result of these changes of each G8, G9, G10, which is my total cost. After these changes, what is the impact on my cost? So this is a summary of different scenarios. So immediately we can get a quick comparison of what is the differences between each scenarios and how the, my bottom line is gaming, uh, making an impact. Imagine you have a PNL, you have a scenario at different level of sales and how much is impacting each and every uh, scenario on your bottom line. You can immediately show the summary to management or to yourself for review basically. So this function is very useful if you have a multiple scenarios on the same database and you want to analyze different scenarios impact on the profit and loss account or whatever data you have. This is another option in the scenario manager is that you can edit your scenarios. As imagine means if you have by mistake put the wrong values in the low scenario, you can just click on the scenario manager and click on edit. When you add it, still it will fill automatically all the data, whatever you have, your say your name, your range. And automatically, my comment is that created by this name and date and modified by this name and date. Just this, I can edit the new values. Maybe it is 500,000 dirham, no dollars. Click OK, show my values will change. So it's, again, it's very easy to change all your scenarios. The only thing is that we need to understand which scenario is having what impact on what variables there could be hundreds of variables there could be few variables but we should we must understand which file we are working for and what's our objective and in case if you want to delete just select the scenario click delete we can delete the scenarios we cannot undo it 
and the, the this option are you manager does not have option and proper message that do you want to delete or not the only way you can do is that do not save the file and open the file again you will get the scenario back so this is the functionality for a scenario analysis important tool most of the time we cannot use this function we can use other functions but this is one option we should be keeping in our mind that it make it may make our life easy and maybe we can use it in a lot of uh, our day-to-day -day, uh, planning uh, tools second Excel function I will close this file now next two functions are very relevant I have seen usage of these two functions are freak more frequently as compared to scenario analysis uh, especially when you are in uh, uh, financial planning and analysis department or uh, your responsibility is for projections or budget analysis or uh, making a new feasibility study so here what i choose that instead of a raw data i want to discuss a small summary feasibility study for a retail outlet so that we can uh, we can uh, uh, have understanding of how the small retail outlet feasibility looks like and how we can use what if functions and goal seek functions in the retail uh, feasibility study first we need to understand what this data is it could be an any feasibility it could be any model and we all know when we are making the financial models there are some assumption sheets and uh, there are some uh, formulation uh, of those data cells linked with the assumption sheets so I have fixed data and I have a variable data uh, we must make sure that we have a proper linked data models whenever we need to use our what if analysis anywhere and what if analysis is always uh, be used for only fixed cells not for the variable cells because variable cell is a formula excel doesn't know where the input is we have to be working very carefully on the input cells in all the what if, what if analysis for example i have a data here let's start with not yet confirmed my rent free period not yet confirmed expected handover so this is just general dates information and expected date is for example first jan 2020 i have a store a big store having an area of 5100 square feet there is no internal mezzanine or external area for the store it's mostly used for the restaurant basically then if you want you have internal mezzanine or external area but for retail so store mostly it is only internal area it means means I have a total of 5,100 square feet. Total area is in square meter 474. These are all variables basically when we are comparing in one store with another store. What is the size? What is the uh, assumptions compared to other stores? So we have to put all these assumptions and the comparisons in the feasibility so that we can easily compare with other stores. Apex assumptions is 400 per square feet. Uh, this is fixed all the highlighted cells are fixed it means it is not variable it's not formulation is formula is not there it's all fixed so i can have my data models linked with all these highlighted cells my sales assumption per square feet is 1750 we have question that from where we are getting this data always these assumptions or these kpis are linked with the existing companies operations maybe we have another stores or the companies having another store they have already a uh, similar brand in uh, in almost similar ranges and generating this much revenue based on the location based on uh, revenue based on branding so these are the assumptions we have to input basically 1750 is my sales per square feet this is then lease uh, information my turnover rent 8 percent Gross margin for that brand, mostly fashion retail brands are having a gross margin between 40 to 60 percent, or it goes up to 70 80 percent if if I am having my own vertical integration. But if I am having a franchise, definitely the percentage of gross margin goes down, uh, mostly between range of 40 to 50 percent. Gross margin, annual rent escalation. This is all coming from lease agreement. Five percent, five percent. Rent per square foot is 220 and linked with my annual growth as per the lease agreement or lease proposal. There is no external and mezzanine um, area. Net effective rent is most probably zero. 
annual sales growth assumption is 5% every year. So it means my revenue total sales for the year is my sales per square feet multiplied by total area. So I'm getting my annual uh, sales for the year one. Then all the years are linked with my growth percentage. I can easily change it. So it's very easy. Means if I want 6%, I can just press 6%. So my numbers will change accordingly. My cost of sale is linked with the gross margin percentage. More or less, if we have a franchise brand, on average, based on the historical data, this gross margin will be fixed basically. Until unless you have a uh, separate uh, sell through uh, uh, analysis or different uh, uh, analysis on uh, or policies to sell in on a discounted sales or whatever it is. So if you are targeting to sell on the discounted sale, like maybe because of COVID, for example, we have uh, to close our outlets for a couple of months. So you already have a stock in hand. So you want to sell on discounts so these percentages will change year on year in that case we can link our financial model with yearly gross margin percentage separately then this rent is being calculated automatically based on my lease agreement for example 20 per square feet multiply with the area square feet this is the formula here no manual input service charge water these are fixed cells but square feet already from is there maybe i'm doing a royalty so royalty percentage is mentioned so royalty is mostly percentage of the revenue so multiply with the 3.5 percent of royalty again these cells are all linked my staff cost is 10 a number of headcounts and most probably my average cost per staff is 5200 multiplied by 12 my annual cost and then in the annual growth of 1.3 you can see that my data model is all linked with assumptions basically i do not need to manually do anything in my values similarly i have tickle sense cost it's mostly linked with my rentals yeah so we know that lessons cost is five percent of your rental plus for some fixed cost so on average it is coming six percent of your rental normally credit, credit card charges assumptions Shopping bags, marketing expense, other operating expenses, management fees, if there is any. So basically, this is the model to create one small feasibility for a small retail outlet. You may have a different scenario, you have different assumptions, different financial model, doesn't matter. But here, what we need to understand is that we need to learn the concept what these scenarios analysis can do and miracles for us as a finance professionals and how much time we can save and bring an efficiency here there so this is very easy means we have all studied the technical knowledge is how to prepare the feasibility studies what p and l looks like and what is the impact i'm going to the state point that how this is the normal based on the assumptions that this is my normal net profit but now the question can come what revenue i need achieve 1 million revenue in year one or what revenue I need to achieve uh, 1.5 million profit in my year five so it is very difficult because we can see that our financial models are all linked integrated we cannot change any of the cells until unless we change our assumptions basically so the um, random way is that it and file method to calculate for example I want net profit of 1.5 million i don't know how much growth sales growth i need maybe 15 percent let me check it is 1.45 it's still not same maybe 16 percent 1.49 i'm pretty close so hitting file method basically but we do not look professional we should be able to provide these answers immediately to our management or to our uh, uh, decision makers basically or for our own analysis for example, these are two very important tools we are going to discuss now. How to resolve these uh, scenarios or issues with the with the next two functions. So I will be explaining you goal seek now. Goal seek function is basically giving us the values by changing one variable cells. It could be your revenue. For example, it it's up to us. I want to change my cost or I want to change my income. So depends on that. So we need to 
for example i want to change my year 5 profit 1.5 million by using a gold seek it will give me the exact answer how much revenue growth i need 1.5 million so what i need to do i need to click on what if analysis click on gold seek and there are three variables or in cells gold seek is asking for what is this set sell value of i60 i selected i60 or if i because i my cursor was or there you can select like this also i60 or any cell what value i want to change it which 1.5 million from 1 million to 1.5 million and what i want which variable i want to change so for example i want to see how much growth i need to change to 1.5 million i will click, click on my growth assumption and click ok i got the results it is exactly 16 percent 16.21 percent and i am having exact value of 1.5 million data for example i will go back again i want to change my year three profit to 1.2 million by changing my sales per square meter i don't know how much sales i need but i know that my sales for year three is linked my sales assumption for year two and sales year year two is linked with sales year one and sales year one is linked my sales per square feet for year one i don't know how much year one assumption i need to change to make it year three revenue goal seek is very useful tool to provide me this information also so i will just click on my cell which i want to change uh, what if analysis goal seek i want to change it to 1.2 million by changing my year one assumption for the sale it means it will change my year one revenue it will change my year two revenue and it will change my year three revenue automatically to calculate my year three uh, net profit so same i need to select my sales g60 which is net profit for year three what value i want to change it by changing sales c60 it is very easy to understand if we go to reverse study of these cells by changing cell c16 what value i will get in cell c60 so it is like that you can also understand easily then i will click here Excel will calculate. i have now changed my sales assumptions to 1.1800 per square feet which gives me a net profit in year 3 1.2 million so GoldSeek is a very useful tool to give you one variable analysis. What will be the results by changing of one variable and feasibility, basically. Now, we all know the NPV is where the present value of future cash flow is zero. We have here IRR 29. Uh, for example, my NPV is at the rate of 14% uh, cost of capital. And then there's a formula based on the cash flows. I know 1.6 million is my net present value, but what is my break even point? We don't know. Again, what the normal way, if I do not know the function, I will do the hit and trial method. I will start changing it to 1,600 my per square feet rate revenue. is giving me maybe a net present value of 663 still it is not same i will maybe change to 1500 but but with the help of gold seek i can easily calculate my net present value i know if my npv is zero my break even point if I, uh, my npv is zero we sell d77 zero by changing my revenue I can easily calculate my even points by changing my revenue. Click OK. Done. So my is zero. What has changed? At level of sales AD 1499. My assumption was 1750. I can see my risk, how much variation is required. Easily I can calculate my variances, how much differences I am getting. For example, 
so 17 percent change so my risk is 17 percent okay if my sales volatility is 17 percent i can still be positive by in this project so goal seek function help us resolve this complex calculations within a second basically i will go back my original assumption was 1750 so this is what goal seek is so i need to understand what is my break even I can just see year one break even. For example, my current revenue is 8.9. I don't know how much is revenue is required. Uh, I can update my break even sales now quickly and update my. So 7642 is my revenue in year one. And my assumption was 8.9. I can right seven six four two is my year one assumptions twenty thousand daily sales as compared to twenty four thousand my daily sales so this is how i can make my life easy by using the what if analysis and goal seek function now the third important thing is that what if i need to see the impact of my bottom line results uh with the two variables or one variable and i want to see what is the impact of at different level of sales how much is my npv is changing right so it is very difficult i cannot make my multiple sheets at different levels so this is one another very important tool we can use a data table i will straight away go to the uh, data tables for example i will hide this basically the already prepared for example in retail i don't know my what is my gross margin over a period of time and <coughs> my revenue for example so first i will give, explain you how data table works currently my assumption is 48 percent what if my uh, uh gross margin is 45 percent or what if my gross margin is 52 so what i can do i can make a data table gross margin percentage uh, at different level of 50 48 46 44 i am writing here percentages for example i i am choosing different five variables and what Changes I want to see on my NPV at different levels of gross margin. What I can do, I can select my data, go to data table. They are asking, it's asking me two inputs: row input, column input. My variables are in column, so I need to select column input. And these are, I know it's a gross margin, so I will select my gross margin variable just click okay i got the results this is my original linked with my npv 50 percent gross margin my npv will be 2 million 48 percent 1.59 million so we can see that our assumption are 48 now 1.59 at 46 percent my npv is going down 44 42 i will be in loss so I can easily understand at different levels of my uh, assumptions, one variable, how much impact it is making in my uh, bottom line NPV. So you can link this data table with NPV, you can link this with uh, maybe year one profits, year five profits, whatever you want as a result to see, I can link it to, for example, see my, I can link year one. So my year one profit at 50% gross margin is 81. 48 702 46 524 but at 40 percent my year one profit will be loss 11,000. so i can do this analysis with by using the data tables you can see cannot delete any of the value in that because it is all one table. i cannot delete anyone anything i can do a nice format and can show this into my presentation that at different levels of my gross margin percentage is my impact on year one or i can have year, year two year three or 
whatever profit I want, basically. Whatever variable and results I want, I can see it here. Now, uh, we will discuss quickly two variables, basically. I want to see my impact at different levels of revenue sales and different level of gross margin. For example, I will start with again 50%, 48%, 50%, 48%. These are my gross margin assumptions and I can start my 1750 and maybe reducing my per square feet 50 them per square feet. In this case, I want to see the impact on my NPV. I know if this is my per square feet, my total revenue will be per square feet multiplied by square feet and uh, daily sale will be divided by 365. This is my daily sales assumptions. Just for my, sorry, I need to lock the cell C13. So these are my daily sales assumption at different level of gross margins. We can do formatting later. I just need to infog, uh, tell you the concept itself only. And these are my daily sales and like, like that. How it works, now I have two variables, my gross margin and my sales per square feet. All these, these two variables are constant, so you can easily work in data model. If it is, you cannot link 8.9 million because it's already a formula linked with the input cells. So I can, what I can do, I can select my data model, the data range, with the variables, gross margin here on the uh, uh, column, uh, row side and uh, my uh, sales per square feet on column side. I can click on what if analysis, data table. Now my row input is gross margin. I can select my gross margin. And column input is sales AD per square feet. Just click here. Done. My data model is done at different levels of cost margin, different level of daily sales. I have my NPV. So we can do a formatting later on. Uh, if we want, uh, we can have conditional formatting. All should be negative, should show as a negative, as a red one, so that I can see. Maybe I can have a conditional formatting cell equal to my existing NPV should be then highlight in green, fill with green. Okay. See, I can see 48% my assumption in the data model was and at the rate of 1750, my NPV is 1.99, 1.99. Now at different level of variables, I can see the impact of my NPV. I can have year one, or I can have any any uh, resulted formula, net profit, EBITDA, year five, year one in this data table. Maybe I want to see my five year, 50 year EBITDA, how much will be the result. This is the result at different level of cost margins. So this is how the data model function is working with variables input. So we cannot go for three variables or four variables. There's a limitation in that. So data model, can be used for one or two variables and the impact of these changes of these two or three variables i can choose any of the percentages uh, and uh, the impact will be very easy so this is a summary we can also see that what is our risk basically at different levels of our input variables it should be at the time of for example making a feasibility study we are projecting future based on assumptions but the lower the risk it means the project will be more successful there are chances that it will be more successful and you can be able to negotiate it better because you know uh, what is the maximum capacity you can go and after that the project will fail so these are the three functions uh, i hope uh, you must uh, enjoy these functions and basically as a finance professional we st we should learn new things excel is dynamics changing a lot and uh, maybe in the future if we will uh, go for the new sessions we should be thinking about dashboard reporting 
our dynamic reporting, Power BI. There are so many things in Excel which, as a finance professional, we must need to understand because we need to learn these new technologies to uh, to analyze, to save our time, to bring more efficiency in our operations, basically. So now I will be open for any questions if you may have, uh, and uh, we can discuss the questions. Uh, there is no question in the question bar, so um, I will wait for some time and uh, then uh, we'll see if someone wants to take a live question, I will be available. Can you share? Yeah, there is one question. Can you share video after session? Uh, uh, I am not sure if this video is recorded, but we will check with SEC from my side. There is no issue. We can share. Uh, I think, yeah, this is recorded. So definitely we'll ask request SEC uh, to share this video with our uh, attendees. There is one question from Nusa and uh, Actually, my question bar is very small. I just need to. How does we create scenarios that shows a merged version of both low inventory and high inventory? Okay. So basically, whenever you create the scenario, this is a question from Nisha Nair. So basically, See, when you need to create a scenario, you should know what changes you want to make it. You can make changes in all the cells, select all the cells and start making changes. And if you have a selected cells, only select cells. When you create add, there is an option to select your cells. And accordingly, if you want to change only uh, low inventory or high labor, others to select only those cells and change it accordingly. Right? So you can have one scenario with all these changes together. So, Whatever is your variables, you can select all, you can make all changes in one scenario. But you want to keep separate for each objective, you can keep it separate also. Uh, there is another question for Google Seek. If two variables have impact on the same cell, how do we accommodate that? If two variables having impact on cell cells. Okay, for example, if there's a formula, in our example, we have a sales per square feet and we have a square feet also area. But both are linked with my revenue. So as a revenue, my revenue formula is area multiplied by sales per square feet. So I cannot change my revenue cell because it's already a formula. I can either change my assumption for sales per square feet or my area. So area, most probably you are get, you cannot change because you are getting a proposal. You have to use it as it is. But the variable which I can control is my revenue. So most probably I will go for change in the revenue instead of area. So but goal C can have only one. The result cell will be formula, but the variable, the changing cell must be a constant. So you cannot change select two constant cells to change one formula value. So you have to select only one in that case. Can you share this template goal C? Uh, the question is from Nusa Al, full name I cannot see. Okay, so from Nusa, yes, I can share this template. Uh, you can send me email. Uh, on my email ID, uh, I will, or you can send to SCCA. Uh, you can definitely get. I will write my email on the chat box also. So I will definitely share with you. Then, if my profit and loss figures are linked. Another question from Sayed, if my profit and loss figures are linked, 
to multiple other sheets and I use goal check on the profit and loss sheet. Yes, as far as you have a link model with one assumption sheet basically. So basically in in our example, I have a headcount. I may link my headcount with my payroll detailed calculation or my sales assumption. I am assuming only sales per square feet, but maybe I can link it with my total sales assumption for year one. So whatever is the end constant cell, I can have a goal seek function with that constant cell. But if my entire model is linked with the variables, like for example, I have sales per square feet 1750. If I will write uh, 1750 multiplied by 1, I cannot use that cell in goal seek because there is a formula now. I must have a constant value in any of the cell to use the goal seek. If it is uh, equal to multiplied by 1, I know it's same thing, but Excel will not use goal seek function because it's Excel will use it as a formula cell, not as a constant cell. Uh, there is a question. Will goal seek read and change the link sheets for 10? Yes, goal seek when you have a constant cell, whatever this constant cells and the variables and everything or all, all formulas linked with any of the sheets in the link sheets, it will change those values also. For example, I have my sales per square feet linked with my sales assumption sheet then i am in sales assumption sheet i am using monthly revenue linked with my sales per square feeters so it will go and then it is again linked with my total sale in my main revenue a main pnl and then net profit so it will change all the values linked with revenue linked with my monthly uh, sales sheet and then my until it is going to back to the constant cell so it will change all the values whichever will be impacted with those changes basically Will the recording will be available? There's a question from Mahek. So we will request uh, CCA to share the recording. If uh, from my side, there is no issue in that. Definitely, uh, ACCA can share it. Then there is a question. Another question from Sujit. Good day, Salman. Would it be possible to get hold of your goal seek explanation Excel sheet? Yes, I have already shared my email ID, or uh, you can definitely get my detail from ACC by replying the uh, email uh, for the webinar invitation. They will share uh, definitely my email ID. Will you share this Excel sheet? Okay, same question I was using. What if, but data table is a uh, New function I learned today. So question from Suresh. Yes, there is. A, there are so many things in Excel, Suresh. Uh, we must be learning every day. Even myself, I have 15 years of uh, finance experience. I have done so many feasibilities, so many things in accounting and finance. But still, I am learning Excel every day, five to ten minutes, even for one function. Excel is like a Google. Whatever you need for your day-to-day -day business, Excel is having the function for that. We should start using the functions instead of doing a repetitive manual task, basically. Can you please share this example sheet with participants? Same question. And this sheet be available for our most most of the candidates uh, listeners are interested in getting the model. Definitely, we can share that model. It's a small practice exercise. Uh, but it's good to have a uh, basically a template so that it can be used for other things also. Can this be available for our? My uh, there is another question from Sayyid. If my profit and loss figures are linked to multiple other sheets, can I go seek? Same question. I think I have already answered. Yes, you can still go seek as far as it's a constant value. Uh, if there is a formula, it cannot be go seek. Suresh, thank you. Okay, can you please go through the working of data table once again? 
uh, Sibin, there is a question from Sibin. Can you please go through me the working of data table once again? I will quickly explain to uh, Sibin. I will delete data tables, for example. I have two variables, gross margin and my sales per square feet. And this cell is linked with my NPV. So I want to make impact of NPV by changing any of these variables, basically my gross margin and so what will be impact of my gross margin if I have 47% gross margin or 1,400 sales per square feet. I can just select my table, go to data, what if analysis, data table. Here, always there's a confusion which row input is what gross margin or uh, my sales per square feet. So row, my gross margin is on the rows basically. So I will select my rows into gross margin. I will select gross margin, and then my sales per square feet is column. I will select column. That's all. This is what will, uh, table data table will do automatically. It will give me the results because it is linked with NPV. It will give me a result of NPV. If it is linked with my year one profit. Will give me results for year one profits of changes of these two variables. How many? There is another question from let's see how many variables can be used at a time in the data table shown now. We can use one or two data uh, variables in the data table. So more than two, we cannot use it basically. Data table, there's a limitation of only two variables. Uh, there is a question from Anand. Please advise how to start from where to start Power BI. Power BI. See, Power BI, before Power BI, uh, we must have a very good control on our data. What data I have, what functions for the organizations, operations, each and everything. So we must understand what is my data and what results I want to do it, basically. So Power BI is basically a dashboard, but before Power BI, we should start Power Query. Power Query is a data transformation tool. From a raw data, maybe we are extracting some GL data dump from our system, but GL data dump, there are so many things, date functions is not there, or we cannot have a formula. There are, this is a dump data basically. So Power Query will help us to transform the data into a useful data basically first, and then, from Power BI, we can link that data tables with the Power BI to get a nice data table tools, basically. So it's very long term journey. First is to understand your database, what database you have, where it you from where you will get, what's the format, and what is the end result you want from that data. So then you go for a Power Query learning. Definitely, I am using uh, LinkedIn Learning and I'm using YouTube, and I am taking my uh, personal training sessions also uh, from different uh, channels. So your steps should be understand your raw data first. From here, your data sources are, and what data sources those data sources are generating in what which format, what format you need for the reporting. So Power Query will help you to transform that data formats. It's a very detailed Power Query tools. Uh, you need you need to spend at least. 10, 15, 20 hours, depends on your database knowledge is basically. And then from that tools, you can go for a Power BI. Power BI is just a tool like a Power Table, a dashboards, graphics, presentation of data, which you will generate from the Power Queries. This was a question from Adnan. Anwar. Okay, Adnan Anwar. This is a question from Savio. Could you share the work file with us? Okay, the big question we, we can share. There's a question from Amar sir. Do you have slides for notes for this lecture? Um, I think recording is available. If uh, ACCA does not have any issue, we can share this recording. Uh, there is no written notes basically. Again, it depends on business to business and operation knowledge. Uh, first, we need to understand our business. First, we need to understand our operation. These tools will help you to resolve your issues in the relevant operations basically. So I gave you general idea what these tools can do for you basically. There's a question from Sadia. Uh, can the 
what if analysis scenario planning and mpv section be converted on a dashboard for better presentation uh yes uh, definitely when you make a financial projections this is only a summary for the understanding of the function but when we make a financial models this is only not one sheet we have a proper presentation slides we have a proper presentation assumption workings linked with the uh, different assumptions and it your financial model, model could be from 15 to 20 or maybe 50 pages basically so this is only a summary just for the understanding of the function itself not the financial model itself so every company may have a different requirements what they want to see in a financial model there is a question from muhammad hi can we learn dealing with more than two variables in any future sessions uh yes actually uh, again we need to power query is a very uh, useful tool where you can have a data transformation with so many functions formula you can change you can add formula columns you, whatever you want to do you can make planning in financial uh, power query uh, to make your data transform into that scenarios you can do a lot of more things so if you are good in your database you are good in excel uh, and you know what your data consists of and you know your business operations i will suggest to start taking a uh, power query uh, trainings uh, it will really help you and change your mind basically amar can you share budget template for all types of possible if possible uh, budget templates we have not discussed budget templates see again unfortunately what is our uh, normal uh, candidates are doing or our acc affiliates members are doing work related things we are just copy pasting the templates see if each organization is having a different requirement different operations different variables we should use templates only for our understanding not to copy paste yes it may make our life easy but if you do not understand the background working of those templates if you you cannot make you cannot make uh, you are not the dynamic basically you should change your mentality and then understand business operations first and then use the templates and make your own templates because each organization is having a different uh, type of reporting structure different chart of account different uh, formats of pnl so templates can give you a quick access to your results but until unless you do not understand your own operations it may give you a wrong information basically so i suggest learn the functionality by yourself make your own template then you have a full control of your database mostly when you can download the templates from uh, from uh, internet uh, it may not cover all the business operations for example you are a manufacturing company the template may be for two uh, products you may have 50 products in your uh, factory facility how you will do you need to understand your operations and logic behind that first and understand your financials i suggest to make your own templates basically but yes if you want any suggestion discussions i have already shared my email we can discuss on that let's see there's a question how many variables can be used at a time in a data table shown now it could be one or two data tables data variables Kamil, thank you for the nice presentation. It is useful. Thank you, Kamil, for attending. Uh, there is a question from Sujit again. What other professional skills has been useful for you to get to the current position that you are at? What other professional skills? See, it depends uh, with so many things. With so uh, life uh is basically different for everyone the scenarios are different for anyone what i have learned over the last 15 years that first of all you need to keep learning you cannot be passing an acc exam and then start working and forget about what you have learned and you the, the, uh, there are so many things changing on in our day-to-day -day life 
so learning and development is one important thing secondly do not stick to one function of the accounts department you have to learn different operations different functions even if uh, large corporates are having sub departments in finance we have a ap separate section uh, ar payments maybe fp and a then uh, financial reporting and then budgeting is separate so unfortunately if your job rotations is uh, your company is not doing job rotation you are not learning the skills which is required to become a finance professional basically so first of all there are two things learn by yourself second is that your job workplace should provide you those opportunities to learn new things so i think learning and development is the key to success uh, because as a finance professional we cannot say that i am master in ar only and i don't know what my vat is vat compliance is so we cannot say if your company is not providing that opportunity you need to spare your time one and or two hours in a weekly basis is more than enough to learn new changes new developments in our current environment basically those things will provide you more chances and opportunities to grow basically if you do not learn new things then your chances will be limited until unless your organization is having a growth plan but again until unless you will not be willing to grow no one else will provide you the opportunity so willingness should come from yourself okay so no one will else give you uh, the opportunity you need to take opportunity you need to create the opportunities for yourself do not waste your time especially when you are a newly graduate a newly qualified ACCM uh, affiliate or a student your first five years are very important to choose your career path those five years unfortunately we are looking for high salaries we are looking for a big companies experience but if you are not learning maybe those first five years you can earn more but after five years your growth will be stopped then your chances of getting opportunity will be low so you need to keep learning these five years i'm always giving an example our profession is same like lawyer our profession is same like doctors they sell their services the more experiences they have they have more value basically so experience can come from your work experience your knowledge your day-to-day -day trainings basically so if you are not learning new things you will be a general physician you will not be a specialist then we need to keep learning and the more knowledge the more better work experience the more learning we will have we can grow to the uh, there are more chances you can grow easily because when you talk the listener can easily understand what kind of knowledge you have you if you do not have knowledge you cannot even talk and you cannot participate in the discussions okay how to encounter encounter rapid changing variables it's a question from asker i didn't get your question maybe you are talking about i don't know whether you are talking about this worksheets or uh, our career but uh, uh, career wise we need to keep learning but if it is talking about uh, variables we need to prepare a proper working model financial model to keep all these variables uh, as an assumptions and then work on each variable separately basically again business understanding is very important in that so i think uh, i will end this session now and uh, it's 11 minutes over from the plan one thank you very much uh, we have uh, uh, we had a very good response from attendees uh, thank you very much uh, please give your feedbacks to acca middle east uh, by replying your email uh, if you like it we can arrange uh, uh, new sessions uh, for uh, our uh, ACC community uh, and thank you very much please keep learning it will really add value add value in our day-to-day -day life even so sometime career will not provide you opportunity immediately keep learning and you will get the opportunity very soon inshallah thank you very much i will end the session now